Hi, I'm Dr. William Starzak, and in this video, I'm going to demonstrate an indirect approach to treating osteopathically. Now, this in no means is a substitution for appropriate osteopathic training, and after watching this video, if you're not already an osteopath, you can't claim to be doing osteopathic treatment. This is for educational purposes only. And the, the nature of very deep effective osteopathy uh, is, doesn't make a very entertaining video. One of the best initial things a bodywork practitioner can do is to listen. Either listening without a contact on the patient's body or listening with a contact on the patient's body. The best treatment flows from very deep listening. And if you have listened to the point where you understand the lay of the land, then what you need to do becomes very obvious. But, so I'm going to share something that's a little bit easier to start in with and get a hold of and start practicing to give you something more to, to hold on to other than just making contact and waiting and listening. In the future, I'll make some videos about, about that practice. Here we're going to basically talk about finding balanced ligamentous tension, and we're going to use uh, Karen's wrist here. So there's many different ways that you can uh, contact the wrist to work with it. This is my favorite. This is my go-to. But you can also hold it this way. You can hold it this way. Any way that you can uh, be responsible for the balance of tension, that you can interact with the balance of tension will work. And if you're watching this video and you're going to try this, you should already have extensive anatomical knowledge. You should know the bones, the muscles, the nerves, the arteries in the area, and the ligaments. It's not absolutely essential, but it, it, it will go a long way in helping you be effective. Generally, you're going to assess for ease and bind. So there are, there are two major planes of motion in the wrist. You have ulnar and radial deviation. So this is ulnar deviation. The wrist, the, the distal part of the hand is deviating towards the ulnar side. And this is radial deviation. So the first step is you feel which is easier. So in her, it's honor deviation. And that you'll find is the most common. And then we can also look at extension and flexion. And here we want to be very gentle to be able to assess that the difference between the motions. If we're too strong, it's going to feel like, oh, she moves fine each way. So you want to, you want to be sensitive enough and gentle enough that you can pick up on exactly which is easier. And what you're going to find is that there's also this third component of rotation, which is really just one side flexing and the other side extending. So the radial compartment doing one thing, the ulnar doing the other, and that creates a sort of extension. So in her case, her hand wants to go right here. Very slight extension. will um, be preferred over. It's like there is a gravity to that position. I, I like to use the analogy of the loose Jenga block. The position of ease feels like that same feel when you go to press a Jenga block and it just slides right out. When there's bind, it's that Jenga block that doesn't want to move. You can make it move, but then you're going to move the Jenga blocks around it and the tower is going to fall. In that case, it's the same thing with the body. You can make it move through the resistance, but you're going to end up putting more tension into adjacent structures and you know, not really achieving the motion right in that joint that's restricted. So once you get it to balance, one option is you can simply wait. You can hold it at balance. What you should begin to feel is a sense of flow. You should be relaxed. The patient should feel relaxed. It should not be uncomfortable. And under your hands, 
you'll begin to feel something. It's like a flow, it's like a, a motion, an expansion, a balance of tension. One trick to uh, speed up indirect releases is either applying compression or traction. And generally you'll find that it will match the mechanism of injury. So if it was a pole injury, you'll likely need traction. If it was a compressive injury, you'll likely need compression to better balance the tension in the ligaments and to achieve the release. There are a few other tricks. releases back towards neutral. And it's really that simple. The same technique can be applied all over the body. This basic principle of taking something where it wants to go. So like a Chinese finger trap. If you try to pull your fingers out, they get stuck. But if you push your fingers in and hold it, then you can take them out easily. That's how the body will release as well. You disengage it, and then the inherent forces, the primary respiratory mechanism or the breath of life, the patient's thoracic respiratory mechanism, they will help with then releasing those restricted tissues. So you're not stuck having to fight and make them go somewhere. You're simply positioning the body so that it can let go of that on its own. And this takes a lot of practice, so be very patient with yourself. And really, the best is to work with a mentor or someone who's been doing this and, and uh, is good and can reliably produce results that will greatly accelerate your, your rate of development in applying these principles. Thank you very much. Please like my video, check out my other ones, and subscribe to my channel.